Whoa, Nathan, how'd you do that? Well, it really just starts out with a good foundation and you know, then you just actually, have Actually, I think I got it. I just need some of these books. Yep, yep, start with the books. And then if I just put them down here. Mm, uh, no. One more there. Mm. And then one there. Uh, uh, Ricky, uh, Ricky, no. <laughs> You're not a very good teacher. Maybe we need to sit down and talk about this. When we do keyword research, or as we call it, search analysis here at Income School, <laughs> that's that's topic maybe for another video. Um, <laughs> there's really four main things that we're working through to determine which topics to write for um, our website, mm -hmm. right, for our blog. Yeah. Um, the first one is really about the structure of the site. That needs to be key, mm -hmm. and that's really what the focus of this video is. It's really about how the content fits together synergistically. Yes. That's your business buzzword for the day is synergy. From there, we move on to actual specific ideas for articles. We move from there to um, trying to determine approximate search volume. And then we move from there to looking at the competition. By the end of this, we have a really nice solid hit list yeah. of articles that we can write for our site that have a really high likelihood of success. But it all starts with that solid firm structure, which is apparently something that I sometimes fail at. Yeah, well, <laughs> after, after that intro, I, I will have to agree with you. So really what you need to do is, well, this whole process is so key to the success of a blog. And so starting with the structure, planning out the structure in the beginning is something that's just going to increase the likelihood that you have su a successful site. Uh, we have a little paper here. You can't see it because it's just a little sketch, but I'm sure Andrew is going to do great for us and kind of help you understand it. So when you break down, you, you want to start by mapping out your niche. Exactly. So one of the first mistakes I see like so many bloggers make is they go to do their keyword research, their search analysis, and they're like, all right, I'm going to use the Google auto suggest. I'm going to start by, hmm, this is a site about cycling. So I'll do cycling A. Oh, this one kills me. Here's my, here's a good list of articles, uh, things I could write about. Cycling at the Olympics. I'm sure there's not too much competition about that topic. This is where people start. And what happens is they get 20, 30 articles in and they're like, really covered the topic. Mm -hmm. There's nothing more to say. Yeah. We're like, really, about cycling? Right. You have no nothing more to say than what you can fit in 30 articles. Well, and I'd say not only that, that people get discouraged when they feel like they've covered the niche in 20 or 30 articles, but all of this is very high level. I mean, right. we're talking about the topics that are probably the most covered because it's just very simple cycling. And so it's just gonna be so difficult for you as a beginner to get any sort of success you may get success, but it will be further and farther between. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take that high level topic and we're gonna break it down. When we're picking a niche, we wanna pick a domain name that gives us flexibility yes. to move up or down this kind of spectrum, this, this structure that we have. We may reach a point where we say, okay, well I niched down way too far. I picked a domain name that's really, 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 really specific. And now I'm pigeonholed, it's gonna be hard to move up. Let me give you a specific example. What if instead of like, you know, cyclingnation.com or whatever, I were to pick something like road to bike cycling exercise fitness programs.com? You know, like we're just like so specific that it's like, okay, what if I wanted to do something in mountain biking? Right. Well, too bad. Yeah. Well, what if instead you made your website something like twowheelers.com? Mm -hmm. You know, like now all of a sudden you could branch out all the way to like dirt bikes and motorcycles if you really wanted to. So don't pigeonhole yourself there. Pick something kind of brandable, but that fits within the niche. And that'll give you this flexibility. But let's talk about now, like when we start out, kind of how far down yes. we're going to go. Yeah. Okay, so Ricky, back to the tower. Yeah. We, we had the structure of the tower, sort of like an A-frame. You, you, your, your big, the overarching topics at the top. So cycling would be at the top for us, right. for this example. And then you can see as the tower expands, you're kind of, uh, you know, the top cycling. Then you have some subtopics, maybe mountain bike, road bike, BMX bike. Right. And then under that, you could niche down. And then you could do, you know, com competitive road biking. You could do um, leisure road, like road biking for leisure, or you could do, you know, training, whatever the case may be. But you just start niching down and then your, your tower gets a little wider and wider. Exactly. Not, not like the books thrown all over the place. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a little bit less effective, by the way, which is kind of what it's like when we start just doing our keyword research with only a high level niche in mind. It's like, it's like throwing books on the floor. Yeah. It's that ridiculous. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is say, well, okay, I'm not gonna do, I'm not just gonna do cycling, it's too specific, I'm gonna break it down. I wanna focus on road biking, but for now, maybe road biking is a bit wide, a bit broad. So I'm, let's cut out competitive road biking and let's come at, cut out kind of the leisure recreation, you know, 
going on a ride with the family. And let's focus on the fitness piece. Okay, well now that's a pretty good niche. Yeah. And maybe that's where we start. Because from there we can break that down even further and pick some categories, right? That we're gonna have on our blog site, on our blog, um, on our website, our blog site, blog site. on our blog site. <laughs> it's like coined a new term. Um, <laughs> So maybe here we have things like, you know, route planning, mm -hmm. specifically for fitness. And so, I mean, articles that you would write in here might be things like, you know, planning the perfect route for a 20 minute cardio workout. I mean, that's a fantastic thing. It's maybe not super searchable, but it's a, it's a nice specific topic that you could link to as a resource on your website. Outside of the ride planning, maybe another category could be like indoor training for road bike fitness where you have you know, spin bikes and we have other apparatuses that, that people set up where they use their actual road bike. Mm -hmm. And then there's like nutrition, there's road bike maintenance. Is road bike maintenance different for competitive riders versus just fitness riders yeah. versus leisurely riders? Yeah, there's some differences. Yeah. The maintenance schedule is gonna be very different. So now we have several categories. One, it makes it so much easier to find ideas, but two, it gives us a structure to start with. Yes, so you can see now where we've come from, we're really niched down a quite a few levels into the topic. Right. Um, and that does a couple things. And I think one of the big things is it will give you some authority as you start writing your blog. Uh, like you mentioned, the throwing the books all over the place. If you start too high, that's what it's doing. And Google very well could be wondering, well, you wrote on mountain biking, BMX, you know, all of these different topics. But if you just niche down, they're gonna see, oh, this person has 10 articles all about spin bikes. Exactly. I mean, they're gonna see that topical authority. So the plan here is, at the very beginning, we're gonna pick three specific categories or even subcategories. Yes. So if I'm doing road bike fitness and I'm moving to indoor training, maybe I even pick one of those subcategories mm -hmm. of spin bikes. And I'm gonna come up with 10 topics to write about. So I'm gonna pick three categories or subcategories and write and choose 10 topics under each one. Yeah. That gives us that authority in that one topic. It gives us articles to interlink with, and it helps a ton with research. Yes. When you go write 10 articles in a row on very similar topic, suddenly you know everything about that, and by the time you've written three, the other seven are easy. Yeah, and the cool thing about this is there is so much more to say than you would ever imagine. And part of that is through the research, you start learning all of these nuances. You start learning all of these little things that have to do with a very niche down topic that you otherwise wouldn't have ever known. And so not only does it help you choose those first 10 topics, but it gives you room to expand after that. So when we go back to Google and maybe try out this auto suggest and we start with something more like, you know, road bike, uh, fitness, I mean, that's only one level down, mm -hmm. right? And then I do that, fitness A, fitness accessories, action app, Amazon, average speed, um, road bike fitness routes near me, review rims. Um, now suddenly we're going to be able to come up with better topics that aren't so broad and so vague. Mm -hmm. It's like when somebody writes an article that says bicycle maintenance, mm -hmm. and they just cover like the things they know in one article, yeah. where it's like, no, what if instead we wrote articles about how to properly maintain the chain on a road bike? You know, that's a lot more specific, but you could write a whole article about that topic. A word of caution that I'd give you as you're going through this process is to be careful that you're not writing an article that is too far niched down. Um, this could lead you to just getting very little traffic. Even if there's no competition and you do get the number one spot on Google, it really just doesn't mean a ton because it's not going to do that much for your blog. So a good example of this might be something like the question, as it gets cold outside, do I need to add more air to my road bike tires? Well, that's a very specific question. But instead, if you wrote an article that's just like five important things to do for your road bike yeah. as it gets colder. I can imagine a dozen queries around things that my bike needs. Um, you know, do I need to oil it differently? Is there, is there a type of oil that's more right. cold resistant? And all of these little topics individually probably just too aren't small. quite big enough to write. But once you lump them together into a singular article, it becomes a great post. So as we do our search analysis, what we're finding are good search queries. Oftentimes we need to group them back together mm -hmm. to turn them into really good article topics. Yep. One other thing that I would say is make sure that as you go through this process, we told you you wanna start with three categories or three subcategories, and then you want to get 10 articles from each. Don't start writing until you have all 30 articles planned out. That, right. That's huge because if you just start with one and then write it, 
then you have to go through and do the whole research process over again to find the next one and the next one. But if you just plan them all out at once, then you have your really nice hit list where you can just knock out all the articles. Every time you sit down to write, you have something to write. We've learned that just from experience working with thousands of people now is that search analysis is the key indicator. If somebody gets it with search analysis, the odds of their success at building this online business just go way up. But whenever somebody fails, when we look at their site, search analysis is usually the top factor, mm -hmm. followed shortly thereafter by ability to write decently. Right. Yeah. You don't have to be the best writer as long as you can come up with good topics and then do good research on them. Well, sorry, one last thing. Yeah, that I, go for I, it. I, I was thinking about this. This is really cool. So this method that we've talked about is really great for people just getting started. Oh, um, yeah. if, you've, if you're just starting and you're trying to work through your first keyword research or search analysis, then this is a great method to use. It's going to help you stay so much more organized but this is also a great method to use if you already have content on your site. If you're you know, eight, 12 months in, even less than that, it would be okay. More than likely, you've done some amount of this work already without knowing it. So all you'd have to do is go back and just actually map it out. See what topics you've already written in. More than likely, you've written in too many topics, mm -hmm. and you really should pare down and just try to pick a couple. But the cool part about that is you probably have some great analytics data at this point where you can see if there's any articles starting to get traffic, and then you can start with those categories and actually you know, branch out a little bit more and write another eight or nine or 10 articles in each one of those categories so that, again, you can get better traffic. Exactly. So focus on three. Mm -hmm. And once those three each have at least 10 articles a piece, yeah. then you can go yeah. back and add and more to the next more. and the next and the next. Yeah. We just need to make sure that we have a depth of content yeah. in each of those specific categories. Coming up soon, I'm going to be doing an SEO webinar. Oh, yes. uh, it, you know, we've done a couple of these in the past. Uh, and People really like them. Uh, there's just a lot of benefit in learning kind of what Google's doing. We're all, always keeping track of what's going on. Uh, we have some new things to add this time, but I also want input from you. I'd like to know what your biggest SEO questions are so that I can make sure I incorporate yeah. them in this yeah. upcoming webinar. So comment below with your SEO questions, comment about the topic of search analysis, tips that you have, just comment because of course, commenting enters you in uh, to our contest, contest for a chance to get to work with us for a couple of days and we will help you with your blogging business. So that's awesome. Comment below, like the video if you liked the video. Yeah. And um, other than that, we'll see you next time.